We probably have the most expensive urine in the world, thanks to the vast amounts of herbs, vitamins and minerals we consume each day. The question is, are they life-saving? Or maybe just a waste of time and money? Or perhaps they're even harmful? Casey Barros has been investigating one of them. One of the most popular mineral supplements is selenium. It's needed by the cells in our bodies to keep them working properly. And there's been a belief that low serum selenium, that's the selenium in our blood, is linked to cancer risk. I don't think we can absolutely correlate prostate cancer or other types of cancer risk with selenium intake, but in New Zealand, we know the sores are low. We've got one of the highest breast cancer prostate cancer, and I think it's the second highest colorectal cancer incidence at the moment. Whether that's selenium or whether it's some other component of the New Zealand diet, we simply don't know. But if we can find a way to overcome this, obviously it's going to be desirable for the population. The selenium levels are usually measured by serum selenium, and, and that seems to be affected by dietary intake. It, it's also affected, though, by other things. And so, for example, our, in our own studies, cigarette smokers have a lower serum selenium compared with their dietary intake than do um, other individuals in the population. Our prostate cancer subjects have a lower serum selenium level than a control population. So certainly in some groups it, it seems to be lower and that may be reflected in dietary intake. It, it may also reflect a genetic component. The selenium composition of a diet is very strongly dependent on where that plant has grown or where that animal has grazed. And so we're known to be low in the selenium content of our soils. We've been slowly bringing it up in the New Zealand diet by bringing in Australian wheat, but it's still from our local studies suggests it's not quite as high as in Australia or in America or parts of Europe. Now, while Australia does have some selenium-rich soils, it's far from uniform, so it's not guaranteed that all our wheat and beef, for example, have enough selenium or that you and I have adequate amounts in our bodies. So how much do we actually need? What's clear from animal studies is that there's a U-shaped curve. Too little selenium is a really bad idea, but so, so is too much selenium. And, and our evidence in the New Zealand population suggests exactly the same thing, that it's not a good idea to have a serum selenium level less than 100 nanograms per mil, which is significantly less than you'd normally have in Australia or America or, or some of these other sorts of countries, but you also don't want to go above a level of much um, more than about 160 nanograms per mil. The best way of testing whether selenium works in cancer prevention is to do a trial comparing it to a dummy tablet. But as Lynette Ferguson explains, one of the biggest trials created some problems. What happened was that five years after it started, they actually stopped the trial because they were worried diabetes seemed to be somewhat increasing and other sorts of hints of adverse effects rather than positive effects. There's been debates over what should be the recommended daily intake of selenium. And, and I understand that Australia has actually decreased their recommended amounts from 75 micrograms per day to 55 micrograms per day. And, and New Zealand also has that recommended amount. Part of it may be to reflect that you can, with a normal diet, get about that level, but it's, it's hard to go much higher. There's a range of dietary supplements that contain selenium. A lot of them have got selenium in the form of selenomethionine, or it might be inorganic selenium. And, and you can also buy a form of selenium that's organic selenized yeast. So how do you know whether your health would be improved by taking one of these selenium supplements? Well, the fact is, in the trial Professor Ferguson mentioned, while on average there was no effect, it did seem that people with low selenium levels benefited. Professor Ferguson believes that people at risk should think about having their serum selenium levels tested with a blood test. We found it, it's affected by lifestyle factors. Cigarette smoking, for example, seems to decrease serum selenium in our population. Genotype also has an effect on serum selenium. So unless you know your starting serum selenium, you're not going to know whether you're going to benefit from dietary changes that enhance selenium intake or whether some sort of supplement might be beneficial.
If you're going to a supplement, the one that we've been working with is, is an organic form of selenium and, and that's a selenized yeast and certainly in a proportion of our population it looks as though it's beneficial to supplement with that. Mm -hmm.